In today's video, I meet up with my friends, Craig and Charlene. They moved to the Philippines and have been building their dream guest house featuring eco-friendly dome-shaped rooms made with aircrete. We'll tour the native house they built and live in. Tour their completed dome, available now as a rental. See the chill area and common space. And they'll share some inside information on how they build the domes, turning their dreams into reality. And all of this is close to waterfalls, coral reefs, amazing beaches, and sunsets on Sikihor Island in the Philippines. Right now I'm driving up to my friend's house, Craig and Charlene. They've got a project up here on the hill and just check out the drive up there. Craig and Charlene moved here in search of a new home and with a desire to build a space for travelers. They acquired this amazing property that was once a firefly sanctuary and now they are well on their way. They have their first dome finished, their second dome started, and currently are hosting some workaway volunteers. The first thing that we built was a small and humble abode. We went for the native style because it's cheaper to build and also everybody knows like how to build native here. So downstairs is just a kitchen and just living area and then upstairs is just a bedroom and the way that we built this house is to be kind of like camping so we just have the roof and then we have just mosquito net either side so at night it gets the cool breeze coming through and we don't have to have fan or AC or anything like that. So the cost of a little native house I would say is around 5,000 US dollars including utilities, you would be looking at an additional, let's say about anywhere from 500 to 1,000 pesos, including your water, electricity, and Wi-Fi. You've got a small refrigerator. You got your workspace. Yep. You, I guess you got in Wi-Fi. Yeah, we have Wi-Fi here. A little, a little storage couch. couch, double gas burner, nice countertop, stainless steel. Yep. A little microwave. A little microwave. Okay. And washer and dryer out the back. Yeah. Just washer. Oh, just washer, right? Yeah, we hang dry everything. Uh huh. Right. And, That's... and then the bathroom. And then here's the bathroom, outdoor style. Mm -hmm. And we'll go up your little wooden stairs here. So this is our bedroom. As you can see, it's just mosquito net on the outside, on both sides. Um, and. This land uh, and the surrounding area used to be a firefly sanctuary and they don't maintain it anymore but we still get a lot of fireflies here and sometimes at night Craig and I will wake up and the ceiling will just be completely filled with fireflies and so it'll just wow. be a magical. So this is how we start building the domes. Um, we, we start with the foundation and we have a, um, a center point in the middle and then we have what we call a compass arm. So this will sit on each block and we can build it up and around and it will give you the full layout of where all the blocks are gonna lay and it will give you the full height. These are the blocks that we make the air, like make it from. This is called aircrete. Wow. It's, a, it's an aerated concrete. Yeah. And so it's I can hold really it with light. one hand, you see. Right, yeah. And then they're super lightweight, they're fireproof, they are very good insulation. They're termite proof because no insect wants to live inside them. And like good sound insulation as well. If you're inside the dome, the only kind of noise you can hear from the outside is what would be coming through the windows in the dome. And then how are you making this aircrete? So we make this with a dish soap, which is seventh generation, which comes from America. It's actually a plant-based dish soap so it's good for the environment. And then we get a bag of cement, mix it with water, and then we make a foam and we inject it into the uh, slurry of cement. And that would be in a blue barrel all the way to the top. And then we have a form and then we pour it out. We are at our first dome and it had just been completed 
about a month ago. Um, it took, well, we started construction in the end of July and we had finished it in November. So however many months that is, about five. The part that took the longest in the construction was the final details. We had focused on making the air creep blocks at first and that took about a month and a half to get all of the blocks we needed to make this dome and afterwards it took only a month to construct everything including the window and the doors this all was built in a month but then the finishing touches and the final painting and getting everything to be perfect to our standards that took two months. Now that we have finished our first dome, it feels really good to continue on to the second one. We feel like anything is possible and we're just really excited to build the next four. The skylight is a hexagonal pyramid which basically gives you as much light as you possibly can no matter where the sun is moving around the, the building. It's gonna, there's gonna be light shining in. It's completely made of glass it does cause a bit of heat to come into the building, unlike the aircrete, but we obviously counter that by there's the AC and then also the window being open. Even during the day, even when it's really, really hot, it's a lot cooler in here than a normal standard concrete building. So you've got your AC unit here, but it's fairly cool right now for it being the middle of the day. I like how you have an actual clothes rack yeah. because many places around here don't. Yeah. <laughs> so we have an outdoor bathroom with an outdoor shower and basically you're seeing Craig's mind right now with the shapes and the cave and we wanted to somehow tie in the natural landscape of our property which is where you see like all of this backdrop in the bathroom is our property it's just the limestone here but we didn't want to cover it with all concrete and so what we did was we tied in a natural looking cave uh, to give some rain blockage for when you are using the CR. We wanted to give our guests the feeling like they're in the jungle, you know, just like completely surrounded with nature, just a nice outdoor jungle shower. So the dome structure, it only takes about three weeks to get up if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, it would take you a little bit longer to work it out, but yeah, they go up really quick. And how many people was that working on it? Uh, that was only three people working three on people it. Three people crew. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is what this one looks like. Yeah, a different shape arch. A different shape. Was that very complicated or not no. so much? It was easier than this. Really? Yeah, yeah, because it was just straight up and then we had the semicircle. This one we had to get the diameter of the circle to match the floor where it was going to touch. So uh -huh. this took a little bit more um, engineering. Uh -huh. Gotcha, uh -huh. gotcha. Yeah. I really like what you're doing with this bed here too. Mm -hmm. That'll cut down on some later cost, right? Yeah. We put the sockets on the side of the bed uh -huh. instead of them being on the wall. I feel like if you just reach over by the side of the bed to plug your things in, it's a lot nicer. And then there's also going to be a switch in the bed for the lights above the bed. Nice. As we're creating these domes, we're yeah. like adding new things and thinking of new ways of doing things here. So the way that we acquired this property, we had a Filipino who was buying this land. So he bought this land and then we decided that we were gonna lease it off of him. And we're leasing it off of him for 25 years, renewable for another 25 years. By that time, we probably won't be around on this property. This property we're probably going to look after for maybe 20, 30 years of our lives and then we'll probably move somewhere else. We own everything on this land. The actual buildings and anything on the actual property is what we own. We've got building permits for all of this, so everything is actually in our name. So when it comes to selling the property, we're basically selling everything on the property, the domes, the chill area, our house, like everything that we've put into this property, that's what people will be buying, plus they're buying the lease as well, which is no problem. This is the second building that we built, and we call this the chill area. I think Charlene has a thing with chill areas. Everywhere <laughs> on the property is a chill area for her. Lay down. 
Uh, it's just somewhere to lay down, somewhere to chill. And it's also, it's the shared space for our guests. This is where the reception will be. And then we have a toilet area, which is still under construction. And then we have a shared kitchen for our guests. So anybody can buy the ingredients that they want and come and cook. And then like, we'll have some, uh, some bar stools to sit around here and eat breakfast. And if they don't want to eat breakfast here, there's also upstairs, which has many, many seating options. Um, so this was just a regular post up until February of this year. And our good friend, Jerome, he lives about a 15 minute drive away from us up in the mountain. And he's this awesome artist. He mostly does sculptures. And when we came back, we said, we need to have some of your art here. And we kind of try to get other people's art into our property as much as possible because it's it just adds a piece of everyone who has helped us along the way. So this monkey here, it is sat with its arms crossed above its knees because there is a symbol of good luck, which is called the bulol. B-U-L-O-L -L, and um, it's this shape but we wanted to do our take on it so we added a monkey. So this entire staircase um, is made uh, out of driftwood and our guys had personally picked each single piece um, like this really cool hand railing here it's like uh, got a it used to have a vine wrapped around it like we just love wood pieces like this that adds a uniqueness to our property. Okay. And it's really solid too. Yeah. I mean, you hold on to this, it's strong. One of the methods that the locals treat the bamboo and wood here is that they'll dunk their wood or bamboo into the ocean for, I think they say it was six weeks. Um, so that's quite a long time and we usually don't have the time to do wait six weeks before using the wood. So the driftwood is already treated, which is perfect. This is my living plant wall. I got inspired by a YouTube video I watched years ago and there was a woman in Brooklyn who had planted tropical plants and made a plant wall and had them all thriving in Brooklyn. And so I thought if she can do this in Brooklyn, I can absolutely bring that idea to the Philippines. The upstairs of this building, as I talked about before, like the downstairs is all concrete to give the base for the upstairs which is native so everything up here is all wood this space here will also be for movie nights and for yoga and for meditation and whatever else that this space can be used for as i talked about the the downstairs is all concrete and for the most part i like the look of the concrete i still want to kind of incorporate the the native kind of design within it. So we wrapped the posts in, they call it bagakai, which is like a micro bamboo. And then we wrap vines around it just to give it a bit, it ties it a bit more in with the building. Cause as you can see over this way, we have vines growing all over the building. Feel free to follow our progress on Jungle Kingdoms on Instagram. If you would like to know more about Sikihor, you might enjoy my video tour of the island. I visit an amazing waterfall with YouTube vlogger Moana in Philippines. And the waterfall even has a cave behind it that you can swim into. We'll also visit some popular spots to eat, snorkel, and watch the sunset. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with someone else that may like it. Sharing our videos and leaving a comment helps support this channel so that I can keep bringing you free videos. For more information, please visit www.livingoverseas.tv.